Welcome to this first episode of Creo Parametric for SolidWorks users. I had previously started a series of videos on SolidWorks for Creo Parametric users. This is the reverse. And in this first video, I'm not going to go into parts and assemblies and drawings and how to do that stuff. I'll cover that in other videos. In this first video, I want to cover five fundamental concepts that if SOLIDWORKS users knew about before jumping into Creo Parametric, it might help ease the adjustment. First off, moving stuff around on the computer screen. So if you are zooming in or spinning the model, that's the same. You can use the roller wheel to zoom in and zoom out. You can hold down that roller wheel or middle mouse button in order to spin the model around. But when it comes to panning and zooming, the control and shift keys are essentially reversed. In Creo Parametric, if you want to pan the model around on the computer screen, it is going to be shift and the middle mouse button instead of control and the middle mouse button. And if you do not have a roller wheel mouse and you want to zoom in and zoom out in Creo Parametric, it's going to be the control key and the middle mouse button in order to zoom in and zoom out. When I am jumping between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, that is probably the number one thing I still get reversed. Number two, Creo Parametric is a RAM based system. Let me give you an example to clarify what that means. I'm going to make a cut in my model and I'm going to pretend like I don't like the cut. Let me turn on my plane display for a moment. I'm going to select this plane in order to sketch on it. Don't worry about what I'm doing now. I'm going to explain this in other videos. Let's create a circle and I'm just going to snap it into the middle of my sketch references. Don't worry about those. And I'll just hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. I'm going to turn off the display of my planes. And then with that sketch still selected, I'm going to extrude it. And let me just go through all. And then for my side two depth, I'm going to go through all as well. Let's hit the check mark. And so I end up making a big, huge cut and getting rid of a bunch of components. And let's say I decide. Oh, that change is terrible. I don't like it at all. Hey, let me just close the model and reopen. So to close this, I can use the close icon in my quick access toolbar. You can also go to the file menu and here we have a close command. Also from the view tab, you have a close command. And as long as you have more than one window open, you can also use the little X in the upper right hand corner but let's close this model now i have another part visible on the computer screen so now i say okay yeah i made a huge blunder let me reopen the assembly i was working on so let's go to the open icon and i'm in a folder let me use this filter down here to limit just to assemblies by the way here's a, another difference i want to point out when you use the file open dialog box in SOLIDWORKS, you have icons for opening up parts and assemblies and drawings. And also there's an icon for the top level assembly for a given folder. Hey, Creo Parametric doesn't have that top level assembly option for filtering down the contents of a folder. But anyhow, I'm gonna go to the list of assemblies this is what I previously had open in Creo Parametric. When I click the open button, hey, I still have that big giant cut in the model. I didn't save this assembly, but when I opened it again, it still has that mistake in there. What's the deal? Well, again, like I mentioned a moment ago, Creo Parametric is a RAM based system. Even though I closed the window, that model is still sitting in my computer's RAM. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me hit the close button. And if I go to my window drop down list, right now I only have one part open in Creo Parametric. But if I hit the open icon again, in the left hand side we have common folders. And the top choice in here is in session. 
this is going to be what is in my computer's RAM. When I go to in session, here is that assembly. If I try to open up the assembly again and it's sitting in my computer's RAM, that's where Creo Parametric is going to open it up from. So just be aware that when you just use the close command, those objects are still going to be sitting in your computer's RAM. Let me cancel out of here. If you want to get those models out of your computer's RAM, there's a command called erase. Let's go to file and then manage session. And here we have erase not displayed. Erase all objects or remove all objects not in Windows that are not currently open from the session of Creo Parametric. And this is a command that I use so often that I have it added to my quick access toolbar. If I choose to erase not displayed, here we have all the different objects. I will click the OK button. So now it's removed those different objects from my computer's RAM. If I now go to the open button and let me find the assembly. Again, I'll use the filter, just get assemblies. Here we have the one that was open. Let me click the open button now. And hey, it no longer has all those different parts cut away from that sketch that I created. So again, just be aware, if you close a model, even though it closes the window, it is still sitting in your computer's RAM. Okay, the third thing to be aware of, whenever you save a model or a drawing in Creo Parametric, it does not overwrite the contents of the previous file. It creates a new iteration. Let me jump to File Explorer to show you the difference between SolidWorks and Creo Parametric. In the Windows Explorer window on the left-hand side, I have a folder that contains a bunch of models that I worked on in SolidWorks. And here you can see all the different objects. You can see the last time that they were modified. There's just one of each object in here. You can see the file name extension like .sldprt for a SolidWorks part and .sldasm for a SOLIDWORKS assembly. So the way that SOLIDWORKS saves is a lot how Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel saves. Hey, it overwrites the previous file. That's different than Creo Parametric. Here I have a folder with some Creo Parametric components that I was working on. Let's take a look here at the Valve Train assembly. Here you can see that we have valve train .asm .1 dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five, and so on, as well as when it was saved. And so this one was done on the 21st, and I have another one that I worked on on the 28th, and then in February, a few different iterations. Here's one from April. So every time that you save in Creo Parametric, it's going to create a new iteration of the object, and it's going to append the number for that iteration after the three letter file extension at the end of the name of the model. You can see a few other examples in this folder where I've got the skeleton model with dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. Here you can see some dot ones and dot twos. And throughout this folder, you will see multiple different iterations of objects. That's so that if you save something and you don't like it, you can go back to the previous iteration. And if you have previous iterations of an object and you want to get rid of them, you can go to File, Manage File, and you can delete old versions or delete all versions. I almost never use delete all versions because that gets rid of everything, but delete old versions will get rid of everything except the iteration of the object with the highest version number. Okay, number four, fourth thing to note in Creo Parametric, selecting different things. And so when I hover my mouse over the model here, and actually I'm gonna use the filter in the lower right hand corner just so that I'm only capable of picking parts. If I move my mouse over the model, it's going to pre-highlight what's directly underneath my mouse at that location. Let's say I wanna pick something that is underneath it. Well, similar to select other like you have in SOLIDWORKS. In Creo Parametric, there's something called Query Select. And if you tap the right mouse button, it'll highlight the next 
object underneath my mouse at that location and I can keep on tapping right until I get the correct thing pre-highlighted that I want to select and I can say oh wait you know what it was this part that I wanted to pick then if I left click it'll end up selecting the object so again there's something called query select in Creo parametric which means tapping the right mouse button until the correct object underneath my mouse's location highlights and then left clicking in order to select it along with that there's a lot of use of the control key for a multi-select in Creo parametric so here I have this part model let's say I want to put some fillets in here well in Creo parametric that's called a round I will click on the round command and this will open up something called a dashboard at the top of the screen as opposed to a property manager in the feature manager design tree on the left hand side of the screen but here I can select the edges that I want to put fillets on or again rounds as they call them in Creo parametric in SOLIDWORKS you can just left click the edges that you want let me drag this out so the preview shows up a little bit bigger and then just keep on left clicking but in Creo parametric it is going to be a bit different so for example if I left click say on this edge over here what I'm actually doing is I'm creating multiple sets of references in here if I want all these fillets to belong to the same set and have the same radius value I need to hold down the control key so let me delete some of these different sets in here here you can see my references and I've got my first fillet if I hold down the control key now I'm getting both of these edges belonging to the first set let me select this one and select another one over here so I'm just selecting a bunch of different edges using the control key so all these different edges are going to be part of the same set in the fillet feature so or again it's called a round in Creo parametric just be aware that when you are selecting multiple references for different features a lot of times you are going to hold down the control key I'll go into that in other different videos all right now for the fifth and the final thing to take note of let me close or cancel out of that command let me use my drop down list to go to the other assembly window I want to talk about how Creo parametric saves assemblies and how that is different than SOLIDWORKS so in SOLIDWORKS when you create an assembly and save it the assembly is going to keep track of all the different folders that parts came from that went into that assembly so it's going to know to retrieve them from those different locations in Creo parametric it is different Creo parametric assemblies do not remember what folders that an object came from when you open up an assembly Creo parametric is going to look for the components for that assembly in four different locations first location your computer's RAM if that model was already opened up in your computer's RAM that's where Creo parametric is going to retrieve it from second place it's going to look in is the folder that the assembly came from the third place it's going to look for is something called the working directory you can set something called a working directory whereas which is just a way of telling Creo parametric hey I'm gonna be working out of this folder and the fourth place in which Creo parametric looks for your different models are your search paths if I go to file and then options then configuration editor we have a number of configuration options in Creo parametric I'm going to scroll down in the list here there's one option that is called search path and then there's another option called search path file search path file is a path to a file a text file that contains a list of all the different folders that you want Creo parametric to look for your different objects from let me show you an example of a search path file so here we are taking a look at one of the search path files that I use I have it called searchpath.pro but it's just a .txt file it's just a text file 
and you can see that it's going to look in these different folders like you know where I have a bunch of different connectors a bunch of drone components a bunch of different piping components I've set up these different folders as places where I want Creo parametric to look for different components and so you can use those different search paths in order to have Creo parametric look up common different folders but again the big difference is that when you have an assembly model the assembly does not maintain a list of all the different folders that the components came from so there's a little bit of data management you're going to have to do on that side so those are just five different things that you should be aware of about creo parametric before you even jump into creo parametric because they are fundamental differences between the way that creo parametric works and solidworks works and if you know those five things then you will be a little better prepared when something strange happens. In the next video, we will cover five more things that you should be aware of. Again, fundamental differences between Creo Parametric and SolidWorks.